I mean, the first novels I can remember reading were the Hardy Boys, the Tower Treasure, the, the haunted house on the cliff or whatever, you know, the house on the cliff. And the, these were the first novels I ever read. And, and I think I sort of graduated from them around grade five or so to Agatha Christie and then read everything I could get my hands on with Agatha Christie. And then I moved into the uh, Rex Stout's novels about Nero Wolfe. And so I, st I mean, it was, the, it was the first stuff that I really read seriously. I don't remember reading other than, you know, Mad Magazine and stuff like that. In, but of actual books, the first stuff I ever read was crime. I was, that was the same for me because we had crime fiction in the house. And I started with Agatha Christie and I loved those stories because she was such a, an unexpected plotter. She did things in her books that no one else mm -hmm. did and in fact occasionally no one else has done since. But then very quickly I discovered Ed McBain. Mm. So I kind of graduated away from this sort of English country house, c cozy environment of Christie into the, you know, the 87th Precinct. Well, I discovered those, and I think that the 87th Precinct novels by McBain are one of the finest series of crime novels ever written. And I didn't discover them until I was, I think, into my 20s. I had just somehow missed them. When I got into my mid-teens, I was finding Chandler and Hammett and my all-time favorite, Ross MacDonald, and I was reading those like mad. And I think the first McBain I ever discovered was Ice. And, and then once you get them, I mean, it's just like finding this, this enormous box of chocolates. Yeah. And, and you just can't stop reading them. I mean, uh, I'd like to be able to say it was great literature and so forth that inspired me, but a lot of times it was that I had favorite shows that I loved so much that I needed more of them. So I was writing what we would today call fan Fancy. fiction. But, but we're now in this, as has been said many times, this kind of golden age of television, where not only is the, are the shows so good, but you can consume them as though they were a novel. You yes. can, you know, 13 episodes become available all at once on Netflix, and you can watch one after the other, and you just uh, devour them. And I think, and this is something you've mentioned, I think this is a challenge to us as writers, yes. is to write books that are so engaging and so interesting that it's going to tear somebody away from their, from their TV. No, I agree with you, and I think in a way, you're kind of reading the television show, mm -hmm. so now we have to allow them to watch the novel mm -hmm. because that is our competition and the standard is so high what's the best ones you know what's your favorites well the best thing I've seen in, in in the last few months was was true detective now we're watching the bridge which is very very good um, that's the Swedish bridge right? that's right yeah. that's I haven't seen the the American one and they're they're great great shows and you know tremendous character intricate plots and they also have a lot to say about something. Uh, what I'm writing, it's as though I'm seeing it play out on a screen. I'm watching these people say their lines, I'm watching them do these things. And it's not as though I'm intentionally trying to write it like I want it to become a TV show, but I think I'm so used to that kind of entertainment that it has maybe in some ways influenced what I'm writing. And I think that's really interesting because I think that kind of show is making writers up their game and, and you know, you look at what's being done in those kinds of shows and it allows your imagination so much more. Well, I could do that, I could do that, I could do that. Whereas 50 years ago, when I was reading Agatha Christie, it was words on a page always. Mm -hmm. Although obviously they had TV shows about the, the novels, they had TV shows about, you know, they had Erco Poirot back then as well. But it was the novels and then there was the TV. And I think that both the novels and television, I mean, if you were to go back to the 70s or, or earlier, and every, telev <coughs> every television episode stood alone. Yes. And the plot was fairly straightforward. It was fairly linear. You didn't have a lot of multiple storylines, things happening simultaneously. Now you have that happening in television, and you also have, an, have, an, have it happening in the books themselves. You have a story going on over here, you've got one going on over here, and they're cross-cutting, and they're back and forth, and there's a lot to pay attention to. And I think that, that television is more demanding of its viewer now than it used to be, and I think that the novels are more demanding now of a, of a reader than they once were. I agree, and I think that's only good for us as readers, because yeah. we get more out of it. Absolutely. Thanks.